pick sizes that are better for different shaped locks. Also, you can use any other type of pick or rake that works well for you. Remember, the only rule is to use what works. When the top pin completely clears the shear line and enters the hull, you will have set the pin. This is also called breaking the pin. When this happens, you will hear or feel a small click. When your senses are in tune with this, it will become an earth-shattering event. You will feel the pin respond differently. At first, you had to fight against both the top pin binding and the spring pushing down. For a brief moment, in the gap, there will be just the spring resisting you. Then there will be a large resistance as the bottom pin hits the edge of the hole in the hull. You must get used to how this feels. You will also feel the click in the hand that is holding the torque wrench. The wrench will give and the plug will rotate ever so slightly and then stop. Although you can feel this, you probably won't be able to see it. Treat the tools as extensions of your body. Don't trust your eyes. Use your other senses to experience the lock. After you have set the pin, lower your pick and make sure that the bottom pin falls down freely. If it stays up, then you have pushed the pin up too far. You can either relieve some tension from the wrench in order to let it drop or start over. If the spring pushes the pin down, then you haven't set it yet. Perhaps this pin isn't the one binding the most, or you didn't push up far enough, or you didn't apply enough torque to the wrench. When the last pin is set, the shear line will be clear with no obstructions, and the plug will be free to rotate. The lock is now open. The actual mechanics behind each lock that unlocks, freezes, or opens vary greatly. Padlocks usually have to actuate a spring-loaded locking bolt in order to release the shackle. This means that you will need to apply a little more torque to get them to open. Shimming is another method of bypassing a lock. The idea is to insert some sort of object into the locking mechanism and move the locking bolt, or whatever is holding the shackle inside the lock, out of the way. Since the mechanisms vary greatly, there is no standard method for shimming a lock. Shimming can also be effective on a wide variety of padlocks. Padlocks usually work by having a spring-loaded locking bolt fit into a notch in the shackle in order to hold it inside the lock. Often the locking bolt will have an angled top which allows the shackle to be closed without unlocking the lock. This means that the locking bolt must be spring-loaded. So, if you can fit a very thin, strong object into the lock parallel to the shackle, you can sometimes slide the locking bolt out of the way and spring the shackle open. This requires that the lock's hole for the shackle is large enough to also allow for the shimmy tool to fit inside. This method will also work for warded padlocks. The actual lock type is almost irrelevant. Padlock shims are often sold that are specifically made to help you deal with padlocks with less hassle. They are made of thin yet strong material that can be inserted into the padlock and then rotated to release the latch. They are often tapered to make them much easier with which to work. Shimming is also very effective on common doorknobs. The latch is the portion of the locking bolt mechanism that sticks out of the door, into the door jam, and holds the door shut. One side of the latch is angled so that the door can be closed without turning the handle. This is because it is spring-loaded. All you need to do is to take a tool and stick it in the gap between the door jam and the door. You may have heard about credit cards being used for this. Try not to break your card if you attempt to use it for this purpose. Most latches will have springs that are too strong and will require a stronger, different shaped or better tool for this purpose. Make contact with the bolt and work it back into the door and the door will open. Some door jams are better than others at blocking access to the door's latch. Many sophisticated doorknob assemblies used in commercial applications are not susceptible to this. They have additional protrusions that stick out of the door. 
This anti-pick latch is pushed into the door when the door is closed. The mechanism then mechanically prevents the main latch from being pushed back into the door without opening the lock. Sometimes you don't have to pick the lock at all in order to open it. You can merely bypass it. This is called bypass picking. It requires that the lock allows for it. Therefore, this method only works on lighter security locks that have an exposed locking bolt in the rear of the keyway or elsewhere. Many desks, cabinets, and a few padlocks are like this. The concept is simple. Insert your bypass pick all the way into the lock and ignore the pins or wafers completely. Attempt to move the locking bolt manually with your tool. Whatever the lock would have done if unlocked, you should try to do the same thing to the bolt. You may be able to move it out of the shackle or slot and allow the lock to open. It is a simple concept when you are lucky enough to have a lock that allows this. When done properly, impact picking and vibration picking can be one of the fastest ways to open a lock. These methods are also beneficial because they require less skill. These methods work on most pin tumblers. Law enforcement officers or other professionals who must open locks in emergencies when time is critical will use this method. They may often have other issues to worry about and do not have the time or inclination to learn the more subtle aspects of the art of lock picking. You can generally pick up the right tool and use it effectively after some experimentation. Experience is still very important for you to have the right touch. These tools do require, though, a lock that is susceptible to these methods. You will need to have an appropriate pick gun. This is a tool you hold in one hand that usually has a lever or trigger that you squeeze with your fingers to provide a vibrating or snapping action. Remember that you still need to use a torque wrench with these devices. Place the pick gun all the way into the keyway. Insert the torque wrench, applying a rotating pressure on the wrench, and squeeze the trigger. Do not move the gun vertically or laterally while picking. As the pick strikes the pins and knocks them upward, use your torque wrench to cause the plug to catch the top pins as they jump into the hole casing. This method uses a snapping motion. A flat tool accelerates toward the pins and strikes them all simultaneously. The physics is similar to billiard balls or those desk toys that have one marble swing and hit a second. The momentum from the first ball is completely absorbed and passed to the second, which moves on roughly with the same speed, leaving the first ball in place. This is what the impact attempts to do. It impacts the tips of the bottom pins with just enough force to knock them into the top pins, thus knocking the top pins up into the hull. The lower pins themselves hopefully stay down because they imparted all of their energy into the top pins. You really don't